everybody, it's Chris Eads, known online as Woo Teeny, here with my special Christmas episode of my Gay Gamer video podcast. Um, I do want to start with a quick movie review. Uh, I did see The Matrix. Uh, I did also see The Matrix from the comfort and safety of my own home. Um, because it was available on HBO Max, I had that option, and I was like, you know what? Yeah. Just because I looked on the AMC app to see about getting tickets. Uh, it opened on Wednesday, and even on Christmas Day and Christmas Eve, theaters were full, the IMAX was almost sold out, Even and Sunday it was even just as bad, and I was like, you know what? I could wait a week and then try to see if I could get IMAX tickets, or I could just watch it on HBO Max. You know, whatever. So I turned on my surround sound speakers and tried to give it a bit of a movie feel. Um, it's not going to be the same as seeing it on the big screen or in IMAX and having that theater experience with the proper booming sound and big picture and everything. Obviously, it's not going to be that kind of experience. But I also didn't want to catch COVID, so <laughs> I, already I already pushed my luck with Spider-Man. I'm not going to do it again with The Matrix Resurrection. Sorry. Um, as for the movie, um, I enjoyed it. Uh, it's definitely going to be a love or hate it. Uh, I know people who really like it. I know people who thought it was terrible. So your mileage will definitely vary. Um, like it starts off, and I'm just, I'm, it, I, it was a whole journey because it starts off where I'm like, okay, what is the point of this? Um, it's just like a retread. Then it becomes like a meta commentary on unnecessary sequels to franchises that's not subtle. It's not supposed to be. Um, and that was good. But then it becomes just a regular Matrix adventure, and I'm like, we've done this, and you're not really bringing anything new to the table. Uh, but then, in the end, they do, and I was like, okay, fine. And I also appreciated that the at its core, the Matrix Resurrections is a love story. And I was into that, it got me, I was all in, and I said, fine. So then I was good with it. Um, so, yay. Um, but again, your mileage will vary. Um, and now, uh, my gaming Christmas presents. Well, they're not all gaming Christmas presents. Um, first, I got some Animal Crossing stuff. Obviously, my husband knows I love Animal Crossing. So we have a 2022 Animal Crossing calendar. Uh, marvelous. Uh, then we have He Found Me. I think he found it on eBay. Uh, Tom Nook. Little flocked figurine. I haven't opened it yet. Um, because I was only able to find a few of them in the Nintendo store, and Tom Nook was definitely not one of them. He's one of the hard-to-find ones, so he was found for Christmas. Then... I got a couple of the uh, Sanrio Animal Crossing packs of cards. Um, I opened one. I said, yay. I looked at them. I said, oh, look at the fun furniture I'll be able to get when I scan these into my game. I opened the second pack, and he's like, did you get any doubles? And I'm like, yeah, the first one's a double. And the second, and the third, and the fourth, and the fifth, and the sixth. And I'm, he's like, what? And I was like, what? Um, I didn't know enough about these. Um, because I would have done the same thing. If I had seen these in the store, I would have bought two packs to try to get more cards. Not realizing that, in fact, there are only six cards to have. You buy one of these, you have them all. You're done. You don't need to buy multiple packs. Although I would like to think that if I was buying those at the Nintendo store, they would say, are you buying these for yourself, or is the second pack for someone else? And I'd say, no, they're for me. I want to try to get more cards. And they're like, no, 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 you only have to buy one. But would they turn on the sale? I don't know. But yeah, heads up. I never knew about it because I couldn't find them anywhere. And then he found them like online or whatever. And I hope he didn't pay too much money for them because he bought an extra pack. Hopefully he can sell the second pack on eBay and somebody will buy it. Uh, but I don't know. Um, I also got a couple of t-shirts, which um, I'm not going to share with you because you'll see them in future episodes. Uh, then he bought me another... Roger Corman cult classic DVD set. Uh, he keeps buying these for me, and I keep loving them. Uh, this is the Nurses Collection, uh, which contains Candy Strike Nurses, Night Call Nurses, 
private duty nurses, and young nurses. They're going to be trashy, they're going to be sleazy, they're going to be delightful, and I can't wait to watch them all. Uh, and then I also got this amazing book called Ad Nauseam, uh, which is the extended version of the book that includes the 70s as well as the 80s. Um, and it's basically a collection of fantastic old newspaper ads for various horror movies that you just don't see anymore because nobody advertises in the newspapers anymore. And I, I miss these from my childhood because there were so many cool ads where I was like, oh, I want to see that. Um, but of course I couldn't because I was just a kid and they were rated R. Um, so that was my gaming Christmas and nerdy, geeky Christmas. And um, that's it. So, um, yeah, I don't have a lot of gaming to talk about. I didn't really play much aside from Animal Crossing. And um, that's about it. Um, I did, I will admit, I do, I do want to mention uh, that I saw online that Nintendo was having a big sale on a bunch of games. And it was mostly just stuff that either, if it was something I wanted, I already have it. Or it's stuff I don't really care about. But for whatever reason, they were selling Saints Row 4 re-elected for like two ninety eight, And I'm like, for three dollars, okay, I'll get it. Um, first, I checked the reviews to make sure that it plays okay on the Switch and everything's fine. And it apparently it's fine. Uh, and it's goofy fun and entertaining. Um, I played a Saints Row game a long time ago. I don't remember which one. Maybe it was two or three. I don't know. Um, it was... I feel like I played it, and it was like, okay, this is fine, but I never really got into it. So, but I'm like, for three dollars, let's get it. Uh, I just hope that it doesn't become one of those things where, like, I see something for, you know, in a PlayStation store sale, and I'm like, oh, it's only a dollar, I'll buy it. And then I forget about it, and then it just piles up in the games that I'm never going to play, because who has time to play them all? Um, and again, it's sad, because an open-world game sandbox game with that kind of fun ridiculousness like a Saints Row would be great to have on the Switch to play portably. Except that I don't ever play my Switch portably anymore. Maybe one day, if we can get this COVID under control and I can travel again. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But until then, I hope you all had a happy holidays and a Merry Christmas if you celebrate. And we'll come back here again for the next episode where we look forward to the new year and back on another crappy year and hopefully a better year ahead. But we'll see what happens. I'll see you then. Bye!